Hi, everyone. Welcome to my live stream show, Co-Design Work with Wonder. I'm June Bea, CEO of Bea Group. And today, I'm super excited to bring my guest and dear friend, Tavita Stovall. And so I'm going to welcome her to the show. Tavita! Hi, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us from the East Coast. <laughs> yes, I um, know. It's evening here, but it's just afternoon there. So I, I always have to think, oh, wait, let me count backwards. <laughs> I know. So it's been a while since you and I have been in person. We used to see each other regularly. Yes. We would drive from San Diego to Downey every week. No. And so just for folks watching, we are live on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on YouTube, as well as Twitter. So thanks for joining us. We also are, uh, the show is run by our co-designer interns at Bayer Group, and they will be asking questions. And so, so Tavita, tell us more about what you've been up to, because you know, you and I've had this fun story behind, you know, our what we've done in the past. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, you know, it's amazing. It's it's uh we're 14 days into the new year and I and I feel like uh things are still moving along. Um and work and life is has some wonderful possibilities. And uh, you know, one of the big things that I I'm excited about is kind of, you know, we are in this very interesting point in our national framework right now, as we all know. Um, so anything that's uh, that uh, uh, I'm hopeful about, I started to think about Sesame Street <laughs> and how do we get to Sesame Street, which, you know, if anybody remembers the song or knows the song, that's kind of the line. Can you tell me how to get to Sesame Street? And uh you know, so that's a little bit of the how um, the work of Griffin Legacy and Associates is rooted in that that type of work, is uh, getting us all back to that that ideal of uh, multicultural, multilingual, multi um, working community of Sesame Street. So that's a little bit about uh, just a little teaser of of what we do at Griffin Legacy. I know. And we've been fortunate. So the interns have been saying hi to you because they actually worked with you this last summer. So we had our 180 interns and everybody worked with Tavita over the summer. And it was amazing. So if you could just share with our audience what you did this last summer with our interns in, in connection really to the spirit of finding Sesame Street and living on Sesame Street. <laughs> Well, no, absolutely. I mean, it was really one of the most amazing experiences of even my career was working with the interns who are so brilliant and vibrant. And and if anybody had a need for hope of a, the future, uh, I got it that uh, during the summer. Um, we really worked on what social justice in the workplace is about. And, you know, we talked about a variety of topics over eight weeks um, and tried to do some deep dives and not only our own self-reflection about our own identity, identity formation, but how do we support others who may not have this, the resources or privileges that we might possess? Um, it was, it's very much rooted in, you know, we talk about allyship a lot in, in the, in the U S right now, but what does it mean? How do you actually become, do be an ally? And since we spend so much time in our workplaces, um, we have to know how to be allies at work, but also to be able to advocate for ourselves as well. And so, you know, when I think about the work that we did, um, together in the summer and Sesame Street, I really think about how um, Sesame Street was really grounded and and created. It was co-created by um, Jean Gantz uh, Cooney and Lloyd uh, Morissette and, and back in 1966. 
And they really looked at what was going on in society at the time, which was the civil rights movement and the need to address poverty in America. And especially in the black community, because they were in New York and they saw what was going on in Harlem. And they said, we've got to do something. People are watching television, but there's nothing for these little kids. And so they created this, this perspective to give them positive identity formation and really show them a way of how to be in the world um, with people who may not look like them or sound like them. Um, and, and I think that's what we need today. <laughs> everywhere. And that's a, a little bit of by what I mean about how to get to Sesame Street is that, you know, the, the work we do at Griffin Legacy is to help that in many different aspects. But how do we help people get to that place where they are seen, their voices are heard, and um, they're not in the margins? Exactly. It's really work that we're both passionate about. It's such a gift to to know you, to work with you, and I'm always learning when we hang out. And so it's well, so it's, it's mutual, June. We, <laughs> I love Bay Group, you know that. So <laughs> yeah. So again, we're going to be doing this again this summer. Uh, we will be having more interns this summer co-designing. We're planning with our current co-designer interns and launching actually a kickoff in a couple weeks for the next crew of, of young people we will be working with in the summer. And so definitely Griffin Legacy is an important partner in that work. And so we wanted to actually give sneak peeks during this live stream show. So I actually next week we'll be bringing on somebody who's going to be talking about deep dives that we hosted with the interns. Uh, he's going to be talking about augmented virtual reality. So uh, that's actually not next week, the week after. So, but anyways, so we have some questions. Um, what has been your inspiration in working to advocate wow. social justice? Well, it, it, it's a long history. I'll give you uh, probably three snapshots of what has inspired me. One is that the whole thing of Griffin Legacy is based on um, my, my company's name is actually uh, a homage, a honor to my maternal grandparents whose last name was Griffin. And um, it really was about uh, they 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 were back in even in the late 1800s were advocating to have uh, black schools for children in the South, and so my great grandfather started some of the black first black uh, schools in the South where kids were not getting ed educated, um, and even to this day we still have. Um, uh, you know, uh, family named school uh, still in Louisiana. So their legacy actually prompted a lot of different things. You know, their kids and their grandkids and great grandkids were inspired from that legacy. Um, but it was also that they, uh, you know, throughout time, I know what our family has dealt with and in injustice in this country, racial injustice, economic injustice at times, um, you know, I know what it's like to grow up and um, have some really terrible things happen and and some really, you know, almost just gross, terrible um, racial incidents that happened to me and sometimes to even my own kids. And what my goal is, is to make sure that kids who might be like me or have been like me, they find a place that is and the skills and the um, the knowledge, so that they can feel empowered to to rise together and to collaborate and organize and understand that they are, you know, bright beams of light, and that you know there's other things in the world that might try to dampen that light, but you know, together with their voice, they can actually do powerful things. And so that's really one of one of the big things that um, inspires me towards advocating for social justice is to, you know, just kind of giving people those opportunities and those um, skills to say, 
they can change their circumstances. They can change other people's circumstances. Um, they don't have to live with uh, the injustices that they may face. We have another question. So in your opinion, has social justice improved in the workplace? Wow, great question. <laughs> um, unfortunately, I think we've got a long way to go in a broad stroke in this country. I think there's been some strides on paper. Um, there's, you know, people have ideas that justice is about numbers and that, you know, we say, oh, look, we have these many people, these many women, these many, uh, you know, at this work site, and therefore we are a just place. And that's not it at all. That's, that's just a tip of the iceberg. It's, there's so much more um, to have real social justice in a workplace. Uh, it's about, um, you know, having a authentic voice in that workplace. Um, it is about righting wrongs of the past from that workplace. As uh, you know, you just can't, you know, you know, paint over the past injustices and say, oh, look, we're doing this now and, and say, oh, well, we're just, it's like, no, there were things that have been unjust in the past at this, this space. And we need to rectify that. We need to have truth and reconciliation, which we'll talk about maybe in a little bit, but um, we have to have some truth about who we are in the workplace and before we can kind of have reconciliation and then establish some sense of social justice. Also, social justice isn't an end goal as if once you say, oh, look, everything's social justice, we can just, you know, keep on now with what we are doing. It is a work in progress. We always have to keep looking at ways to improve how we are treating people, how we are needing to do better. How do we keep it? It's a constant. It's not a, a fixed point of a or fixed endpoint, I should say. So Emma has a question. Do you have any advice? for how the youth should make their voices heard in terms of advocating for social justice. Yes, I do. I have, a, I mean, I have, I literally have, I, I could do a whole lecture on this, but um, I think some of the, the biggest things I want um, anybody who's listening right now to know is that know that if you feel that something is a, um, unjust to you, it is, you're not the only one and that you can come together with other youth to start talking about it, get information, get um, organized in terms of, um, you know, what you want to do together as a group. You're much more powerful together than you are as a single person trying to, to fight a system that of injustice that has been around much longer than you have. Um, but your voices together, and I've watched it and I've seen it, can actually do something. It, it's going to be hard work. Know that. It's going to mean you might have to do research. You're going to bring people in um, to your group that may not be other youth. It could be adults who understand and want to support you in your work towards um something that, uh, you know, a, a, a cause or a, you know, something that you're trying to change. Um, but my, it's like organize, collaborate with one another and educate yourselves um, for the issue you're wanting to um, and the goals that you want to achieve. Another good one, Tavita. What are some of the challenges you've faced in the workplace? Oh my goodness, I'll tell you. <laughs> that's a that's a book, but that's another one. <laughs> but uh, the short answer is, I think you know, there's been a lot of different things. Um, you know, there's everything from some overt racism and sexism that I've experienced, but also some microaggressions 
that I've experienced. I think the hardest part for me, you know, personally is when you, uh, you really have worked and learned and accomplished something and you still aren't seen as um, knowledgeable. And I think that's the hardest part uh, when you're in the workplace and you're like, oh my goodness. Sometimes I go, I have, I have a master's degree and a doctorate degree. And not just that, not that just a degree makes you experience, but actual experiences <laughs> um, around things. And even to this day, I can walk into the room and be questioned in a way that someone who doesn't look like me, who doesn't have my background, um, who's from you know a dominant culture, will be accepted for what they say in a heartbeat, but I have to prove myself over and over again. I think that's really the biggest challenge. It's not a coincidence that you and I have started companies. Yes, you're right. <laughs> if we can't find it, we have to make it. So oh, this is a good one. How has my work in, with social justice improved the environment around you? Uh, I try to do whatever I can um, in any way I can. Sometimes those, it depends on which environment. So for a while I was living in rural Virginia and I was working in, uh, in education in rural Virginia. And it was, it was, um, you know, there were so many times where people had not even been exposed to different thoughts about um, racial social justice or even um, about equity in, you know, for, for many different people who are not considered, uh, you know, part of the mainstream um, categories. So I would often really, you know, sit down with people and have conversations and convene groups. So I, you know, it's hard to say that I've made those people change. And um, if I improved uh, their environments, I think that really is up to the people who I've worked with to decide if I've done that, um, that my goal is to do that. But uh from a social justice perspective, I don't get to decide if um, if I'm a good ally. I don't get to decide if I have, you know, made somebody else's world change for the better. Only they can decide if I've done that um, because that I, you know, that's not my place to say. Uh, it, much like. You know, if somebody's t asking, oh, you know, I'm I'm an ally to, to black women. It's like, well, let the black woman decide if you're the ally. Uh, that's kind of my perspective on that. So I, oh, this is great. So this was going to be our last question. Okay. So what are your <laughs> plans? Well, <clears throat> um, as Griffin Legacy grows and it's been very, very busy these days with um, some really wonderful opportunities to work with different um, organizations and um, education institutions. Uh, I recently, one of my big um, beliefs is that, and I kind of mentioned this a little bit before, is you never stop learning. You can't stop learning. You have to keep educating yourself. Um, and, and that doesn't mean necessarily going to a formal classroom to educate yourself. You pick up books, you talk to people, you connect with communities that are not your community. Um, so recently, though, I was really, really fortunate and honored to be able to complete a, uh, a certificate degree at First Nation University, which is um, uh a all Native American university in Canada. And uh, I got a certificate in truth and reconciliation. And this is some work that I really love and I have loved for a very long time. Um, 
it was my first introduced to me back during the days of apartheid South Africa and was part of how South Africa moved forward after apartheid. And so the Truth and Reconciliation Certificate will allow me to work with First Nation University as partners to bring some of that work here in the United States because they're doing some really wonderful things up in Canada with the Native American um, First Nation um, communities and you know institutions and businesses and government. And that's kind of what we're gonna look forward to doing with Griffin Legacy and Associates, hopefully in the near future. So awesome. It's always, I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't, I had no idea. I'm so excited to learn more about, about that work and to have you come and work with our team. That's one of the next steps for us as Baya Group is we will be working with Tavita as a team. And then, and then you're joining us again this summer. So yes. I wanted to say thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's thank been you. great. And it's always so awesome to see you. So, so for next week, I am doing another uh, grant getting with June. And we're going to be talking more about some tips for, for grant getting. And so please come next Thursday at 3 p.m. Uh, Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. And thank you, Tavita, for joining us today. Thanks for all the, the questions from the audience. Those were some awesome questions. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.